A good house piano isn't hard to come by, but sometimes processing it is. I've got this M1 piano classic sample which I've loaded into EXS24. You might have already seen me use this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it to you how I've got it sounding now, and I'm also going to play it to you before the processing, and then I'm going to show you guys how to compress it. And before any EQ or reverb. Now, even though this video is about compression, I wanted to show you the before and after with the reverb and the EQ because that's where you should get your sound to be sonically before you think about compressing. You can always re-EQ afterwards, but I don't really want to compress a sound that is like a bit dull and a bit muddy. So I'll just walk you through what I've done here. I've got a bit of EQ. There was a couple of resonances here, low cut, very, very, very gentle at 73 and a bit of a high boost. So let's play with and without this. Already a huge difference, it stops that boxiness. I've got this great vintage console EQ, which is an emulation of a 1073 by Neve. And this is this comes with logic. We've got a bit of drive, nice high shelf pushing at 10,000 hertz, and a bit of mid pushing at 4.8. So basically just making it a bit brighter. I'll play with and without. Great, sort of bringing out some of those nice flavors in that piano. And a bit of reverb just to bring it to life. Really short reverb, 7.6 seconds. I actually just turned the chroma verb on. I already had a room reverb on. I thought it sounded fantastic. I just brought down the decay and the wet. So with and without. <laughs> Love it, could be a little bit shorter. Amazing what a tiny bit of reverb can do. Now, pianos are great, but they are punchy, and this can be an issue for your mix, and the punchiness is cool, it cuts through, but in order to control it a little bit, we need to compress it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use the UAD 1176. Now there's loads of different versions here. I'm gonna use the Rev A, which is this white and blue one. Now, if you don't have this, don't worry. Logic Maker version. Um, so do Waves, and there are a few other companies out there. So just do a little bit of, bit of hunting. You could probably get one on the sale, or you can use the Logic one, which is free. I'll show you the Logic one now quickly. Here we go, and you just want to choose Studio FET. So what are we doing with this compressor? Well, we want to work out what the attack is first, okay? We, it's a it works a little bit different. You've got input and output. So basically, it's a set threshold in this compressor. The more you drive the input, the more compression you get. And then the output is the uh, makeup gain, so to speak. You've got attack and release, which work a little bit differently on this compressor. This is fast attack. This is slow attack. So opposite to logic. Okay, fast attack, slow attack. And then you've got fast release, slow release. So what are we looking for here? Well, let's control the sound a bit. So we want a fast attack. And then let's see where we want to go with the release. Now I'm going to keep this in the middle for now. Keep the release nice and fast. We'll keep the ratio at four, so we're not dealing too much with the peaks in the sound, although we could try and compress it more by uh, going to eight, 12, or 20. First of all, let's get the input right, so the amount of compression that we want. <laughs> So really slamming it there. Let's just bring that down a bit. Uh, 
that's better. And let's just hear the the piano with it off and on and just see how much we have to make up on the output game. Perfect, I would say that's the right volume. Now listen to the attack. When I make it slower, it's going to allow more of the punch through. So think, listen and think about the front of the piano. As I make it faster, it's gonna make it feel a bit more squashed and have less punch. Now I don't like it really fast and I don't like it really slow. Let's find a happy medium. About there seems right. Now that's still pretty fast, but it's not dulling the sound too much, but it is controlling that punchiness, which could be an issue later on. Now as for the release, I always do this. I make it really slow and then I gradually bring, bring it back until I feel that it's in the right place. Now the faster the release, the more it brings up the tail of the sound, which is the kind of roominess that we've got going on, which is coming from the reverb. Do I want more of the room or less of the room? Is it a bit too pumpy or is it a bit too smooth? So let's see, the slower I make the reverb, uh, sorry, the slower I make the release, the smoother it will be. Okay, let's try it with the on and off. Now the color and the tone that this compressor adds is amazing. And I feel that we're really getting a more vintage sound because of the way we're compressing it. This really fast attack, this kind of uh, really, well, it's pretty fast medium release and we're squashing it and it's bringing up that room. It is making it a bit more dull in the tone, but the color is pushing it forward and we're getting a bit more sustain, we're getting a bit more solidarity throughout the piano. So just listen up for that. Also sounds louder too. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you in the next video. Remember at Sample Tools by CR2, we also offer a mix and mastering service. Just head over to www.sampletoolsbycr2.com, click on the Mastering tab, and you'll find our range of services there.